there with Carrie Ann Hoskins, the one and only Sonia Blade. Sure, technically there was a Sonia Blade before her and she did a fantastic job, but it was under Carrie Ann's watch that Sonia Blade became the iconic character for those who have played Mortal Kombat. You know that they skipped her in Mortal Kombat 2 and then she came back stronger than ever thanks to Carrie Ann Hoskins and thank you Carrie Ann Hoskins for being on the show today. How's it going? Good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> My pleasure. It's a it's a <laughs> shocker. So your first in-game appearance, as far as I could tell from my research, was in NBA Jam. So you were alongside Charles Barkley and Shaquille O'Neal, who both like went on to have their own video games, and then you did too, with Mortal Kombat. And that was one of the first games that ever used real celebrities, real people, in the games through taking pictures of them on the uh, back of a green screen. We're all used to that now with Zoom calls and whatnot, but green screen was extremely fancy, especially for video games. So being one of the first to do that, you were also one of the first to have to explain to like your mom and your friends and family maybe what you were doing with uh, with your career. How did you go about explaining to people that you were gonna be you, the physically you were gonna be in a video game? Um, well, I'll tell you what right now, it was a lot easier to explain this to my mom than it was to explain her about Playboy, so. Um. <laughs> When the video games came around, she was like, oh, God, thank you. <laughs> so um, there's that. And then my my siblings were actually gamers and stuff. And I was never a gamer. Like I, I would have video games and stuff at, at my apartment and they would come over and, uh, sorry. Oh. They would come over and play these video games and, and I would just sit there and watch and drink. Um, had no desire to play them whatsoever. So when I actually became one of these characters in the games, they were like, what, what are you doing? You don't even like video games. I'm like, I do now. <laughs> so, you know. Wow, that is 30 so plus interesting. years later. <laughs> <laughs> still, still a part of it, yeah. Uh, you were, again, if my research served me correctly, you were a secret character that you could play in NBA Jam tournament. And from what I saw, they actually teased you as a secret character in a screenshot for the original game, but it was all a lie. And people are like trying to unlock you for, for like a year and they couldn't. So then they finally could in NBA Jam tournament edition. So you're like, I don't know if you've heard of Akuma. He's a street fighter character. He's like the secret boss that everyone wanted to be. You were like the Akuma of basketball. And then you were also shooting i had all these people asking me what the code was and i'm like i don't even know what you're talking about <laughs> what a what an amazing life <laughs> and then you shot at aerosmith you were like they were shooting cds at you you were mistress helga who was a symbol of like censorship but also yeah. like a pinup girl that was a fun game to make. Oh, yeah, I bet. A lot of fun. yeah 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 all with all with midway but then Mortal Kombat 3 happened and things just blew up. Uh, Sonya became an, an icon. So uh, what, what has it been like for you in general, I guess, to be a part of this phenomenon? Well, I think it inspired a lot of people, especially little girls. Um, There's a strong woman that didn't take any crap from anybody and got the job done. And a lot of times better than the guys did. So... Um, she was very inspirational to, to kids and adults and women, girls, you know, anybody that, um, that, you know, was in the military or looking to get into the military or looking to get into karate or anything, any kind of like self-discipline. She just kind of put a fire under their butt. So I, I looked up to her too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you brought that. I mean, your, your depiction of the character brought all of that. Um, I, I, again, the character was great in Mortal Kombat 1, but it re the character really took off with, with the athleticism, the energy, the attitude that you brought. Were there any alternate outfits for Sonya that you remember for Mortal Kombat 3? And if you don't want to talk about that, it's okay. But No. Um, no. John drew a picture and gave it to the costume person. And she nailed it to the T. Huh. Looking at the original picture, he's like, "This is this is Sonia, the new character Sonia." Um, he wanted to really change her for 
for the third one, you know, cause she was gone in the second and mm -hmm. they had some problems <clears throat> on the first. So uh, the third one, he just wanted a huge change. So we just mimicked whatever was in that photo that he came up with. Ah, just like that. Amazing. The, the streamlined process. She always struck me as a little bit in Mortal Kombat 3 as a little bit more Sarah Connor, which is really cool. And one of the things I've always loved about Mortal Kombat is how it seems to lovingly borrow from, pay tribute to some real icons in Hollywood. Uh, it's got some Big Trouble in Little China influence, Terminator influence. And they also, Midway, worked on the Terminator games. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, it all, it all sort of connects. And the thing, of course, that made the games amazing to me was that it was real people that I was playing as. I got to feel like I was really starring in, in one of these action movies. And then Mortal Kombat 4 came out and went with polygon-based graphics. And sorry to at all uh, be negative about the legacy, but to me, that was a massive downgrade. I wanted the real Sonya back instead I got polygon yeah. Sonya. I mean, so, it was a huge difference going from three to four. I mean, four was just like, hey, put this costume on and, and we're gonna take some pictures of you. And then we're going to peel you off and put you onto this model. And so things were a lot different. And I didn't get to do the moves and, and all that stuff. So it was not as exciting. <laughs> you were, so you were still involved with Mortal Kombat 4, but because it was Polygon, they, did they do motion capture with you still? Or how did that um, work? Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Um, most of it was just, I just, was, I just modeled it. Modeled ah. the costume. And, but the, um, the conventions and... And the promo stuff after that was fun. You know, I still got to put on the costume and, and go to E3 and, and that kind of stuff. <laughs> oh, all right. That's 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 great to hear. So you felt like it was it was downgrades too strong of a term, but it was disappointing to hear that they weren't going with the with the real digitized actors for Mortal well, Kombat. I think anybody any employee really hates it when technology takes over, you know. <laughs> 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 yeah, got robots awesome. doing your work. <laughs> Yeah, that is um, a very relatable point. And if I remember correctly, you also played the villain. They they got you back for one more full motion video game where you got to play the villain in one of the Sub Zero spinoff games. Kia, and that, that was fun. Kia, that's right. That was yeah. that was really awesome to see. And I, was that the last time you were in a Mortal Kombat game? I think so because I remember doing Kia. I was like three months pregnant with twins, and I had to like. Okay fix her costume so you can see my belly and they had to like shoot tight at times and um just try sucking it as hard as I could okay <laughs> I even that... did a convention as as Kia and guys didn't even know that I had a belly under there I just it had that leather outfit on and you know my my boobs were freaking huge because I was pregnant with twins so I think that's all they looked at and they just didn't notice the belly under <laughs> <laughs> it's convenient <laughs> wow i don't know if you've already talked about that before but that no, is some <laughs> that is okay in my research did you say with twins right right okay amazing stuff uh we'll never look at kia the same way again now i'm like rooting for her you know like through the pregnancy kia can't wait for you yeah, congratulations in advance that's so pretty amazing so dragons you know <laughs> <laughs> So, so you were pregnant with twins in your last role in a game and you, you pulled it off fantastically. You, you looked great and you, in my opinion, are even stronger looking today. I was on your, your Twitter feed and you were showing your abdominal muscles on there. And I was, I compared, I admit it. I got in the mirror and was like, who's better, me or Carrie Ann? And you Are you going to do a side-by-side right. Side right now? <laughs> side -side, please. We will edit that in much to the, uh, my embarrassment anyway. And yes, uh, surprise, surprise. You, you beat me on that one. You are buff. Thanks. So, I, I mean, hard. if I were making a game, I would want you in it. Would you want to be in another fighting game like in the old days? Absolutely. I'm 51 years old and I still have so much to prove. <laughs> No, no, really. I, I enjoyed him so much. I would love to do him again. And I feel like I still could. I can still do the flips and, and all that stuff. So and the punches and. Okay. That, that would be incredible. I'll, I'll, I'll 
talk to some people. You know, I'm a vague acquaintance of of Tom Hamilton from Aerosmith. I've only met him oh. once or twice, but he's a, a friend of a colleague. And I know he wants another Revolution X for sure. The, the band really? is totally. Oh yeah, he he's he he talks about how he bonded with his kids over it and similar stuff uh, as has probably happened with you, pretty soon. I hope so. <laughs> with there, with there, other than a fighting game, is there any other kind of acting, any other kind of game, other kind of role you might want to take on? Well, I know video games, and I they were easy to me, and I would love to do video games. I mean, that's that's my legacy, and I'd really to stick to that. I don't know if my acting is strong enough for a movie. I'd have to have some training or something like that, or somebody on the side do it like this. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Unless they just made me think about my life, then I'd just be crying through the whole movie. So, <laughs> I, I mean, a biopic of your life would be incredible, and you could, of course, play yourself just like Howard Stern did. And I think you'd do even better than than Howard Stern. But yeah, it sounds like video games is where you'd want to stay. It's the world you know. It could be like Titanic. I could just think back of my younger life with all my wrinkles and and tell a story. <laughs> Your 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 wrinkles, like right now. Do you think you have wrinkles? Because you know we're just making friends now. It's a little you you seem wrinkle free. You want me to zoom in? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna have to trust you. I'm I I'm a good five or six years younger than you, but I'm absolutely certain that if we were out in public, people would be like, "So, uh, out with your dad today, Carrie Ann? How's how's that going? You look a lot younger than than people younger than you, and so forth." Thank you. Well, I said to my husband, but don't tell anybody, okay? <laughs> so another thing you've been doing is you create this incredible artwork. Finding out that about you, actually, my undergrad was in, in fine art. So whenever I see somebody is willing to sit down in front of a blank canvas of any kind and say, I'm just going to try to put something out there, uh, I immediately feel a kinship with them. And you do that not yeah. only with with uh, traditional materials, but you use like geodes and natural materials, trusting in them to create work that you can shape and hone. So I, I have to ask about that. Uh, what, what drew you to start creating that kind of artwork? Well, I've always had a huge love of nature. Um, I love being outdoors. I love animals. And I grew up on a farm. And my brother and I hung out with my brother quite a bit, who's just 13 months younger than me. And we used to just go out and explore and just be mystified by all of God's creations, you know, and we were constantly building stuff together, tree houses and, and just trying to um, just make use of the materials that we had, you know, cause we, we had no money growing up and, um, my parents divorced when I was like six and my mom remarried a Vietnam vet who had flashbacks all the time. And, and so we spent a lot of time outside and, and a lot of time, you know, on our own because my mom just had a lot to deal with, you know? So um, it, I think it comes from just a lifetime of that and, and just, just having a love to, to create things and be creative and express yourself. When I see somebody like you, I think, I mean, you're incredibly athletic. You're, you've got movie star good looks. You've been in video games ever since I was a teenager. You think like, well, this person is one of the, the lucky ones, you know. But just because you are in incredible shape and so on doesn't mean your life has been easy. And Books are uh, always deceiving. <laughs> I actually have a good story about that. Yeah, I'd love to hear so, it. Um, when I first had my twins, the first year, I did not sleep at all. They were constantly crying. They were having seizures. They weren't eating. They were vomiting eight times a day. Um, they had cerebral palsy and seizure disorders. And um, the first year, it was just, I, I barely even remember that first year because I was just so sleep deprived and stressed and and just trying to keep them alive. And I had a rose garden outside. And um there was one day where I was out trimming my roses. I had, you know, five minutes, you know, maybe they were napping or whatever, but I was trimming my roses outside and a woman walked by, she had a carriage and the baby was crying. And I remember hearing it. I remember, you know, but it didn't phase me, you know, I'd rather have that, be, that, that 
baby who only cries for, you know, five, 10 minutes on a walk than, than the situation that I was in because it was just so intense. And she kind of waved at me and said, hello. And then later on, we got to know each other. And she goes, I have to tell you, when I first saw you and I was walking my baby who have, who's able-bodied with no problems, I was so tired and I saw you trimming your roses. And I, I thought to myself, oh, must be really nice to have time to trim your roses. And she goes, I had no idea what you were going through at that time. And it's just how, how you, you can portray something to somebody, but it's really not what's happening, you mm -hmm. know? And that's why you should just never judge people and never, never um, think the worst about them or make stories. And, you know, just, you don't know their story. You don't know what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And to look at someone like me and say, oh yeah, she's got it so easy. Just live with me for, for a week and <laughs> we'll see how you do. <laughs> well, you know, I think people are going to be wowed by the story that you've been willing to tell us today. And I'm really grateful for it. I'll never see Sonia or Kia the same way again. <laughs> um, and, and I mean that in the best possible way to, to find out the real person behind it means so much. Um, last ish question, unless you want to talk more, I would talk to you all day, of course, but, but for, for your time, I did want to ask about this concept of identity and you played Sonia when you were I think in your mid twenties, does that sound about right? And that's a time when you've kind of figured out who you are, but are still, you are still establishing your professional identity and still moving forward as, as, you look back on your life. I'm sure you look back on who you were in your twenties and were like, wow, she, she did not become her full self yet. Like you're, you're still, you're still growing and um, improving, evolving. And Sonia was a part of who you later became. So I'm wondering about how the character of Sonia and how just playing video game characters in general has had any sort of influence on your identity, how you think of yourself and, and who you've become. Um, I think growing up as I did and not having anything and having to fight for everything that I did have. And um, I just, I grew up with a really honest family. And I have, I have six sisters and one brother. And, um, you know, we, some of us are halves and, but we're all, we're all just as close as if we're, you know, full-blooded brothers and sisters and um growing up it just I I just had to I had to fight for so much that when Sonia came around I, I more or less just kind of identified with her like oh here's a badass chick who uh, doesn't take any shit and just needs to get the, the job done you know and mm -hmm. that's always been my mentality you know just keep your feelings out of it you know and get the job done Mm. I, I really identified with her and I kind of grew with her, you know, and I went through some scary times in my lives where I had stalkers and, and I didn't know how to fight. And that was my inspiration for, for learning karate and learning how to shoot a gun and, and all that stuff. Self-defense is because I was actually attacked. So, um, Sonia just was just kind of part of me and, and, she felt comfortable. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And, and she still does. You know, now I think she's kind of weak compared to me, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, her in her storyline, I think she married Johnny Cage and had a kid and stuff like that. Whereas you've got twins and uh, with special needs and you've had real stalkers. So you've had, then you've learned to fight. And then, yeah, I would, I would play the Carrie Ann Hoskins game um, and watch the movie, um, read the book. The, 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 buy the cereal, get the action figures. I would, I would get it all, and I hope it all, it all happens. Uh, anything else you want folks to know before we sign off? I'm actually talking to an author right now about doing a, an autobiography or biography. I'm not sure yet, um, but he's interested in in writing it. And I'm like, do I want my story out there? Do I want? I mean, because I've done some bad things. <laughs> <laughs> So, and so as I every really bad things done to me, do yeah. I want everybody to know all that stuff? Uh huh. I don't know. I mean, it, it would get, it would get really real for me and I don't know, my family, my, 
my husband, my ex. I, I don't know. That's just a lot of shit to put out there, right? It is. You're already immortal. You know, you're, you're going to live hopefully another hundred years, but you are going to die someday. So am I. We're older. You're already immortalized in Mortal Kombat. You're already immortalized in, in various things, your artwork. But to have your story immortalized by somebody that you trust, I was on a reality TV show years and years ago. So I know what it's like to have my actual story broadcast to yeah. millions of people. It's pretty weird. But when you know that people out there have seen your true story or is as true as they're going to do in reality TV with the editing and whatnot, and they were touched by it, moved by it, said that it, it wasn't just, in your case, it wouldn't be just Sonia that helped people get up in the morning and feel like, well, if, if she can do it, so can I. It's Carrie Ann whose story. I mean, you've already put enough of yourself out there to inspire people. I was reading about you learning how to do marathons, and I was like, I was actually jogging, thinking about you doing a 26-mile marathon for the first time and your abs. I was like, I need those Carrie Ann abs. I need to jog a little bit harder. Yeah, and I was undiagnosed with this condition that said, you cannot do marathons. And then I did four of them. And I think I did like 16 half marathons. And I kept on injuring myself. And then finally, I get this diagnosis of Ehlers-Danlos with um, um, autonomia. And my doctor was like, I can't believe you were doing marathons. And I'm like, neither can I. <laughs> I wonder why it sucked so bad. <laughs> I did it anyway. And this this I read a little bit about this. There was like they needed to surgically implant a mesh. Is that right? Or my did I read that? Yeah, one? I have mesh in my belly button, in my inguinals. Um, I have my abs sewn together because after I got pregnant, my my abs just kind of ripped open. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of um, stitches and staples and mesh inside my inside my abdomen. Incredible, and and that would leave a lot of people on the couch for a long time. And you are like, let's do some. I will have a kid over and over cesarean whatnot compared to that surgery where they sewed my ads back together. You cannot do anything. You can't laugh. You can't cough. You can't sneeze. Sneezing kills you. Oh my God. You can't roll over. You can't sit up. You just, it sucks for weeks. Yeah. Pain, fear. You've channeled it all into productivity. You've felt the emotions and then used them to motivate you to work, to self-improve. It's just, I'm just yelling about being a fan of you now. That's got to be a little weird. Uh, but yeah, it's it's incredibly inspirational stuff. And it just makes me want even more success for you. I'm biased towards underdogs, towards people who have had to, to fight for what they got. And that's definitely you. So, Thank you. geez, don't know, don't know what else to say uh, without just gushing about wanting to buy your book, buy your cereal, buy your video game. And hopefully I'll get the opportunity cereal. to do that. I know the Carrie and Austin cereal. It would be abs. It'd be abs shaped pink puffs. Rings. <laughs> Say again. Pink rings with uh, like kind of like Lucky Charms because Lucky I love Lucky Charms. It's blue mm. and gray. <laughs> sounds, sounds delicious. I was thinking abs shaped puffs, but Lucky Charms makes sense too. I can do that too. <laughs>